Hello, welcome to the interview relating to Zorgan Experience Clips. This topic is another UFO. Uh, let me read the title correctly. Story of Cinderella in Zimbabwe countering a UFO. It should be interesting to watch. Right, let's watch the video. I was doing my first documentary back in 1997 when I was just naive enough to think I can get an interview with Steven Spielberg. We had a mutual friend involved, uh, this woman Janet. And uh, she gets back to me and she's like, yeah, so uh, Spielberg's definitely not going to meet with you, but... He knows mm. you're working on this UFO documentary. He thinks you should look into this landing case that happened in Africa at the school. And Africa, I said to myself okay. at the time, and remind you, know, remind you guys that I was making a film on UFOs, and I dismissed it so quickly because I thought, there's no way that a mass landing with the sheer volume of eyewitness testimony at a school in broad daylight could happen and the world not know about it. So I just walked away from that story for about 10 years. Ten years later, Ten years, geez, that's a lot of years to ignore the that. Press club with with Leslie Kane, who uh, was um, part of the article in the New York Times that came out in 2017, and she introduced me to this guy, uh, Randall Nickerson, and she's like, "Oh, he's working on this landing case in Africa." Long story short, mm. uh, he's working on a film uh, now. I think it's coming out next year, specifically on just that case. Uh, Dan Farah is producing it, and he said. Um, I'm working on the case, and, and if you want to do something with me on it, I, a small piece, I could. So I got back into it. I licensed some of the footage that Dr. John Mack, the Harvard psychiatrist, that came and interviewed the school children on camera within a week of it happening. Okay. He unfortunately looked the wrong way in London, got run down by a car, and died. What? So I contacted the Institute with the help of Randall Nickerson. I licensed the archival footage. We tracked down the witnesses today. We flew them in from all different corners of the world brought them together. A lot of them were standing right next to each other. These, they came face to face. And one of the things I've realized was that there were roughly 100 kids in the playground, broad daylight, aerial school. Damn, 100 kids. 1994. And they got within arms, arm, some of them within arm's length of these beings. And really? And these witnesses together for the first time in 20 years. Did they have any evidence or something? And a lot of them hadn't even told their, their you know, significant others just because they said they were tired of having to defend this. And I myself didn't believe it when I first heard about it back in 1997. Mm, of course. That segment of the film is the most, in my opinion, is the most powerful segment. Because it's very compelling. You've got all these children saying what they saw on camera after it happened, and then you see them 20 years later, and then we go to Africa, and we meet with the headmistress. Or she was a teacher at the time. We went with other witnesses. We go to the landing site. We talk to people at the school. That case is absolutely, and it was witnessed by lots of other people in and around the area for several days before it chose a school to land. Damn. Steven, it's it's that's so strange. compelling because the children are all clearly, they're not actors. So as they're adults later, they're all talking about this moment, and it's like they had a religious experience together. Like yeah. They're all sharing True. it and talking about it, and you could tell it's like it's a deeply moving experience. If If they were actors... They wouldn't have been able to do such a good job, because to to convey the reality of that moment to them, to 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 be able to have this mm. interpretation of this event where they're all consistent in the story and they're all clearly still shook by this moment, it's really interesting. Because yeah, it's interesting. If, if you had that scene in a movie, it would take like a really good actor to pull it off, and they'd probably need multiple takes. They'd probably want to get the best one. But those kids, the way they were talking about it, and the way they were drawing it, you're like, wow, it really is, does seem like something happened to them. I, mm. I know how credible that the testimony of the children is because I, I, my partner, Rebecca, she's never had much of an interest in, in what I do, making documentaries on, on UFOs. I do other things as well. But when I was reviewing in the studio uh, the archival interview of the children, she just dropped off a cup of coffee and she stopped and went, Oh my God! Damn. Not lying. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Because look, I ask your audience. But how do you know if that person is lying or not? Don't take it from me. Just suspend judgment for a moment, and imagine, hypothetically, mm. if a UFO or several UFOs landed at a school in broad daylight in Rua, Zimbabwe, Africa, and interacted telepathically with nearly a hundred school children. Not all of them had telepathic, but seen the incident. 
How significant of a story would you give that? Well, not only that, they had the same message. Yes. But the yes. telepathic message was that technology is a real problem. Yes. And there's things that people are doing with technology that Damn. ruin the earth. Yes. And they were trying to relay this to children, which is very strange. Yes. You know, That's I mean, strange. Maybe they just thought they were adults because they were the same size as the aliens. I mean, do you think they knew that they were children? Do you think they understood? That they were, I mean, this is all speculation, yeah. right? But uh, no, I definitely had to ask myself, look, during the production of the film, Paula Harris actually turned me on to another landing case that happened in Australia in 1966. 1966. And this time there were roughly 300 witnesses that saw really? land uh, right outside of That's a lot of people in, in Australia. And we went to Australia and investigated that case, went to the landing site, talked to eyewitness testimony, people that jumped the fence at the school playground and ran over to where this thing landed. And then we even interviewed a guy who snapped a photograph of a disc, a Polaroid, back Damn. in 1966, two days prior to the... I event. want to see so that. It's very... Uh, probably that we have, a photo we have photographic evidence, we have uh, eyewitness testimony, and for the first time we've got testimony from a science teacher. So why do these things land at schools? It seems like, and I'm just totally speculating here, okay. it seems like if if I were going to do that, it seems like a pretty benign environment. When you have testimony from military guys that we take a fairly hostile position towards uh, things that penetrate sensitive military installations. And, um, you know, so maybe, I'm just saying maybe. Mm, maybe maybe. They, it's safe. Yeah, maybe it's safe. Maybe yeah, it's but safe we have to stop reacting to uh, you know intrusions by UFOs as a threat. I mean that's the whole thing okay. behind this new task force. And as much as I respect you know the task force, and, uh, my colleagues and I want to cooperate with them to the extent that we can bring information or resources to to what they do. But there is more. This is not should not be looked at specifically as a threat. I mean with yeah. with the phenomena that we observe i mean if they wanted to blow up those f-18s they could do it okay that obviously that's that's not what it's all about and this idea of just labeling it all as a as a threat because it's unknown that's that's a wrong idea 90 percent of the information comes from the public comes from children comes and very very little of it mm. is made up you know in france i mean the, the data would, we get, you know, with, at the French Space Agency comes through channels where if people reported something that's found to be untrue, they are going to be called by the police. Catch Damn, new so people generally don't believe this, huh? So 90% of it is, is true. I don't think it is true, though. Some pretty large amount is fake, I think. There might be a little bit one which is true. That was an interesting topic, though. I learned that. That was a great video. If you want to check out my recommended equipment, just see this video. Check out the Apple links below. This guy gets one commission, but no extra cost to you. Also, don't hesitate to comment what you thought about this video. Okay, I'm going to end the video there. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Get one subscriber. Hit that bell notification so you are missing the upload and you get notified every time I upload a new video. Like this video to, to recommend this video to people around the world and share this video with your friends, family and relatives. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.